Hey guys, just letting you know my voice is still not the best, but I'm trying my best. So here's the next part to All Skeleton Party. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next video. All that is left is Drunk, who has had quite a busy day. After shopping with Rowdy and visiting a few more general stores to buy small things, Drunk arrives at the Kneeling Anvil, strolling inside the place as if he is an old friend. The dwarf inside looks up in surprise and waves a ham of a hand at the skeleton. Hello there, what can I do for you? <laughs> Drunk Skeleton strikes up a conversation with the dwarf about the kind of armour he wants and the two begin to talk shop. Drunk Skeleton wants some Lemaire armour with a fancy helmet and the dwarf actually happens to have a few sets of what Drunk wants. The skeleton hums and has over a few of the selections and finally decides on an abelararian variety <laughs> that has a long skirt of the plates and a very strong looking chest piece that sits on top of a gambeson with steel plate shoulder pads and arm armour that's also covered in the small plates. The dwarf eyes the skeleton greedily. Tell you what, you let me have a few strong pulls from that tankard and it'll be free. Yeah, that's not a bad deal now but well, I know it's a dwarf and all but like can he handle? Oh you can handle it. Aye, okay. Drunk, naturally thinks that it's a hell of a deal. The dwarf whoops happily and takes the tankard from Drunk's hand, having heard about it from those who've seen Drunk use it in the city, and pulls out a gigantic water jug. Holding the tankard to his lips, the dwarf begins to pour water into the tankard and then angles it towards his lips. So he has a constant stream of the golden brew coming to his lips. Drunk is beside himself. Chug, 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 chug. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking loving it. Drunk Skeleton is waving his hat and pumping his fists as the dwarf is beer foam from neck to ears, having downed almost a gallon of brew at this point. Revitalised by the wonderful drink, the dwarf smacks his lips mightily and closes the tankard with a thunk. I haven't had beer this good since home, the dwarf remarks, and brushes the beer foam from his beard. Drunk has already put on his new armour and looks miles better than he used to in his borrowed gear. The two barter a bit more for an extremely fancy dwarven warhammer and the two come to another agreement. Chug, chug, <laughs> chug, chug, chug. <laughs> the cheering echoes out of the kneeling anvil like a spell chant and after a few moments, a loud belch is heard. Walking down the road in his new armour and fancy hammer slung on his back, Drunk has but one more stop to make. You see, while putting out the fires from when Auspicious decided to set the Red District on fire, Drunk had spotted a brothel called the Big Spoon and made eyes inside the doors. He liked what he saw and had a plan in mind. His freshly booted feet came to rest outside the jeweler's shop, bobbles in my gear, and he stepped inside. Oh, hello there, dearie, came from the glass counter as he strode inside. The older woman working the counter waved at him politely. Ma'am, I'm hunting me a mighty great beast of a wife and need your mightiest ring to woo her. Drunk roars out, motioning with his hand towards the glass case. You're gonna get married? But your skeleton, the till death do us part, has already flown the coop, dearie. That's quitter's talk, Drunk says, and pulls out a gigantic bag of silver. That'll do, the old woman says happily, and begins showing him rings. A great sapphire ring, with winding horns of thorns wrapping around the gem, catches his eye and Drunk holds it up to the light. Oh aye, that'll do for my kind of quarry. Lads, Drunk called out via Necroscype, calling out to everyone. Meet up on me, I need witnesses. All the other skeletons were confused as hell, and even Millie thought he was up to something sinister from that kind of language. But all the skeletons, not furious, he's going to be late, and Millie met up with Drunk. Everyone arrives outside the building inside the Red Lantern District. The streets brimming with people going to and fro and the skeletons look around confused. Drunk however is beside himself and motions to the building. It's quite quaint with three stories and a wraparound porch but the doors are taller than normal as are the windows with dark cream curtains covering the windows from inside. All right lads history's getting made tonight. Let's all head inside and enjoy the show. Agile and Millie share a look having not been able to see a sign or anything, but walk up first and step inside, Millie opening the door for Agile. The two step inside, 
get about five paces before Agile grinds to a halt. What in the... You see, Drunk had found a bordello that caters to his particular wants and needs and had been making plans ever since the fire to come back here and enact his objective. Millie laughed with her lips pursed, sputtering out in glee and exasperation. Inside the room, not a single woman was under six foot five and the women were muscular in nature as well. Onis, Amazonians, minotaurs, half-orcs, orcs, all kinds of taller, muscular women stood around or sat at the couches or chairs, dressed either in elegant finery, seductive battle armour, or just common clothes that one may wear around town. Are you kidding me? Millie cries out, laughing more as the rest of the skeletons poured in behind her. The skeletons had about the same sentiments as Millie. What did you bring us here for? cried Rowdy. We don't even have the tools for this trade. <laughs> uh, hush! I know what I'm doing, drunk purrs, and straightens his helmet before walking towards the staircase. Agile finds an empty couch and sits down, setting Millie down as well. The women find Millie just cute as a button and bring her tea and cakes while sitting around her on the couch. A monster of a woman leans in behind Agile and wraps her arms around his bony neck, nuzzling the barrel of his rifle out of the way. Look at you being the stoic bodyguard. You've been carrying her around all day. Her arms were as thick as tree trunks, and Agile swallowed nervously while Millie thanked them for the cake. What on earth is going on down here? came from upstairs. As Madame R walked down the steps, her elegant ball gown channeling every inch of Dolly Parton as it could. <laughs> she was a dark red Oni woman, with two short horns on her forehead and very carefully braided white hair rolling down her shoulders. Garbo's thought a lot about this. Yeah, he's really put in detail about Really big happened. detail. Yeah. Draped along her strong but elegant body was an evening dress, with a great wolf fur shoulder wrap. And amusingly enough, Boots of hard leather and buckles poked out as she walked. The skeletons all froze, as Drunk Skeleton wiped away at imaginary eyebrows, looked back at them with a winking head nod, and began to walk towards her. Oh my my, look who it is again! Madame R purred at Drunk, her smile genuine. She came to the bottom step right before Drunk, who whirled off his ridiculous inquisition hat and bowed low. Agile looked on, his arms folded angrily. This is just fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Millie, however, was having a rather nice time of it as the ladies, if not the whole city, knew of the skeleton darling, the one who lost her leg. Mr. Agile, look, look. They made little drawings on the cookies, Millie said happily and showed Agile the sugar cookies that had royal icing flower patterns on them. Wonderful, he muttered and had to keep ducking and weaving to get away from the large Amazon woman who kept trying to hang on to him from behind. Rowdy and Auspicious were flabbergasted. He can't be serious. I think he's serious. Look at the size of the one in the chair. This was all background noise to Drunk, as he looked up into Madame R's eyes. Well, if I may, madam, I'd like to ask you a question first of all. She looked down at the skeleton, her eyebrows raised. I'm all ears. I bet you are. Now, when was the last time you considered children? The woman crossed her arms and rest her cheek on her fingers. A long time ago. I found if I stood up, men were never able to reach me. <laughs> <laughs> and she says this with a rueful grin. Children? The skeletons all roar out at once. And Millie has to quickly grab a napkin to catch the tea spilling out of her nose. A muscular Nord woman with beautiful swirling tattoos laughs into her shirt snorting loudly. Well, lucky for you, I won't need to. She looks down at the skeleton and blinks a few times. All right, wasn't expecting that. I'm a little confused. What brings you here then? If you want babies, yet no one to make them? At this point, Furious opens the door and walks in, skidding to a halt as he sees Drunk down on one knee in front of an Oni woman, Rowdy and Auspicious standing horrified in the middle of the room, Millie coughing and laughing into a towel, and Agile staring as angry as could be at drunk while being hugged from behind by a woman that looks like she uses boulders as toys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did I miss? Rowdy and Auspicious fill him in while drunk continues. Drunk goes on to explain that he wants his name to continue on after he goes back to being dead, to continuing his legacy and name. All I want from you 
is to adopt a sweet little cherub and for him to take my last name of O'Connell. Madam R is taken back, but seems to find the sentiment almost darling and fans at her neck with her hand. Good heavens, you're almost too pure for an establishment like this, she says with an airy laugh and the entire room is either giggling or staring on in abject horror. However, she looks back down at Drunk and beckons him closer in a whisper. As flattering as it is, and you wanting a child not your own simply to carry your name, I may know someone here that can fit the bill, and is even prettier than me. Impossible, Drunk says with a head wink. Madam R motions towards another Oni, standing some feet away who's wearing what looks like loungewear. You can have me, or you can ask Abigail. She already has a child. Abigail gives Madam R an unsure look, but waves at Drunk regardless. She also has two smaller horns on her forehead, but has light blue skin and black hair, while being slightly taller than Madame R and bulkier. Don't worry, I'm fine, she whispers down at Drunk, but she could really use the stability. Drunk skeleton taps his chin and looks back up at the Oni. All right, but if she says yes, you adopt a kid anyway, and I get to still call you my wife. Madame finally breaks and starts to laugh, reaching down and grabbing Drunk by the cheeks. Sure, sure, but only if she says yes. Abigail was confused when Drunk walked away from Madame R and instead came up to her, but quickly caught on what he wanted and agreed to Drunk's request. With that, Drunk got back down on his knee and asked Abigail to be his wife. Aye, till death do you part, shouted a minotaur woman and the room broke into uncontrolled laughter. Nonetheless, Drunk slid the ring onto his finger and handed her a small bag of gold and another handful of coins to Madame R. It was only after that that everyone noticed Furious standing there with a mechanical leg, and Millie noticed before anyone else. Is that a leg? Is it for me? She cried, and the woman beside her helped her stand up so she could hobble over towards Furious. Ah, yeah, I got it made for you, Furious said, but then both of them stopped and narrowed their eyes at Furious. What on earth is that armour? Is he wearing the gimp suit? He's wearing the gimp suit. I can't see. Millie asked, puzzled, and the woman holding her began to try and suppress her laughter. Oh, that's definitely Gonborough's work, she snorted, and the rest of the ladies began to crowd around furious. Look at how far back her legs are. You'd right die if you tried that. What on earth is he doing with his elbow? The attention of so many women at once almost made Furious start emitting bone steam before he finally broke away to show Millie her leg. The spring-loaded dagger was a crowd favourite, though the flamethrower and self-destruct had Agile rattling most angrily and asking why he had her leg made into a bomb. <laughs> the two skeletons bickered while Millie reloaded the dagger the way Furious showed her and grinned happily down at her new appendage. Auspicious skeleton, seeing the minotaur woman, decided to try something and began to try and woo her. Not with charisma, but with animal <laughs> handling checks! <laughs> yes! Oh, what well, do you want would be... Oh yeah, Auspicious would be great. Yeah. Would. Unfortunately for him, she is quite smitten by the charming little skeleton and they too begin a long dialogue, even going as far as to Auspicious asking the minotaur woman for a date. To his sadness... The Minotaur woman declines him, saying she doesn't date customers and that it would interfere with work after all. Auspicious pushes his luck and tries to convince her to at least meet him for breakfast. The skeleton holds out his arms for a hug. I'll buy, he says, and her hungry eyes are enough to seal the deal, along with the crushing hug she gives him. What kind of muscle girl can turn away a free protein load after all? <laughs> after Drunk made sure the two ladies knew what he wanted, and Abigail giving Drunk a small communication device. The party left the building in high, if not aghast and confused, spirits grey carrying Millie who linked up with Furious outside. So where are we going to get her fitted? Agile asked. Hobbs said she needed a harness to keep the leg in place and from flying away or something, and I uh, may know the perfect place. Agile, Furious and Millie made their way down the lantern lit road back to Gonborough's Leathers, and Millie actually had a moment to really look at Furious' armour. Huh, there's even thespians and geese on your armour, Mr. <laughs> Furious. Agile moved around Furious so Millie could no longer see his armour and glared at the skeleton. Look, Millie, 
Sometimes you gotta ignore how stupid something looks because of what it does. Let's leave it at that. Furious growled and pulled the mask up tighter on his face. <laughs> After a tense walk, they arrive at Gomborough's leathers, and Furious could see Miss Gomborough inside working on Rowdy's armour. Open mind, Furious said, and opened the door. (laughs) Agile was livid as soon as he entered the doors, and Millie just laughed aloud. Now realising why Furious's armour was the way it was, while hiding her hands in her face. Oh, welcome back, welcome back, Miss Gomborough chirped cheerfully and ushered the skeletons and the girl inside. Over the course of several hours, Miss Gomborough modified some of her uh, intriguing belts in order to make a discreet leg harness for Millie, who took it all in a stride. After all, she was excited to get this fancy new appendage. While this was happening, Agile was just looking around the walls, clicking his jaw in outrage and disgust. Can't believe this is where you do your shopping. Look, man, it's good stuff. The skeletons waiting around and poked at Rowdy's armour while the last bit of touching up was done on the leg harness and with the knee joint locked, Millie was able to wobble around a little which made her laugh with rich happiness. Miss Gonborough then had a small request from Furious in which she stitched on some very angry eyebrows onto his helmet. Yay! (laughs) Ajo bought a leather mask to be polite. (laughs) And Millie, not sure what to do, said that maybe a whip would be handy. Nope, we're leaving, Agile said, and skipped Millie back up into his arms and rushed out of the building, the doorbell ringing behind him. I'm sorry, they are so weird, Fury says, hands on his hips. Here, just in case she wants it, she says, and hands Furious a normal-looking bull whip. Normal, except for the goose holding a whip in its mouth embossed on the handle. (laughs) Furious laughs, thanks her and heads out of the building to meet the rest of the skeletons at the Slowpoke, their inn of choice. Inside, the skeletons finally regroup and sat down with the rest of the group, and Millie was showing off her new leg to those who had not seen it yet. Rowdy noticed First had also gone shopping today, as she was wearing some new leggings, a combat harness, some small piece of armour and a chest piece. I really want this combat harness. No. First, where did you go shopping? Rowdy asks politely, looking over her gear. Uh, first think it was animal taming shop. (laughs) Rowdy, furious and agile looked at each other, but don't say anything. (laughs) Wait, did she go to the sex shop as well? (laughs) (laughs) Kyla, after hearing about Millie's leg, claps her hands together. Alrighty, let's get this thing running, shall we? Why is Garbo made his party? I don't know, all wearing gimp suits. (laughs) (laughs) and begins to rub her palms Furious and Agile leap forward holding up their hands whoa whoa wait Furious shouts she said that uh, only stable magic would need to be used Kyla looks at him her brows knitted and a curt frown on her face what do you mean I've kept you boneheads up and running what's more stable than that Furious looked up at Agile for help she said lightning and fire were best and that's uh, uh, anything else may be dangerous. Especially necromancy, blurted Agile and Furious punched his shoulder. Oh, I see how it is, Kyla says, holding her chin up slightly as she crosses her arms. This is standard discrimination against necromancy, isn't it? The skeletons do their best to tell her that's not it, but Kyla isn't having it. What's so wrong with necromancy? Pyro magicians set people on fire all the time, but because they can power stream engines, it's okay, is it? Kyla takes a hand out and holds it palm out, cocking her index finger with her thumb. Too bad, I call the shots, she growls, and flicks her little smote of purple energy towards Millie. Both skeletons scramble to swat it down, and the little orb ducks into Millie's leg as she's telling Omen about the knee dagger and the leg suddenly begins to whir and click as the mechanisms come to life. Kyla stands there smugly as Millie undoes the knee lock and, with the whir and click of gizmos, is able to walk around quite normally. This is fantastic! Millie cries out, twirling on the spot and giving her leg a shake. Agile and Furious look nervously at each other, then back to Kyla, who pokes her tongue out at them. 
Millie happily stamps her foot and with a swing, all the party members look down at her metal foot. From the toes of the foot, an eight-inch an eight inch blade has sprouted. A little hidden gift from hobbits, it seems. I've got a foot knife. Look, look, Omen. My toe's got a dagger in it.